Well, lots is as a state, Beth, I mean, we see all of these, uh, I guess, um, uh, I guess measures that President Biden and House Democrats and Senate Democrats are looking to get through Capitol Hill really on the line, but yet they coincide with this government shutdown or potential government shutdown, as well as um, raising the debt ceiling or not to raise the debt ceiling. First, you have this $1 trillion infrastructure package that was a bipartisan effort from the Senate with Democrats and Republicans. However, they are set to vote on it in the House. But Democratic progressives in the House have said they don't want to vote on that until they vote on this $3.5 trillion spending package that would essentially go alongside that. Now, moderates are, you know, want a lower price tag on that $3.5 trillion package. Um, and Republicans are obviously very much against it because it's too much spending. And it's coinciding with that government, uh, the, the um, legislation to keep the government open or at least partially open, as well as um, raising the debt ceiling next month. So a lot at stake today. Yeah, and unfortunate timing, really. Of course, we followed from time to time where there's this logjam over the funding of the government, so to speak. We've seen sometimes partial shutdowns. Is it likely a deal on that will be re reached and then they can put the big signature infrastructure legislation to another, you know, another time? Well, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House and a Democrat, did definitely seem to suggest that they would end up funding the government. But there still is a fear that um, enough, not enough funds will be appropriated or voted to be appropriated to fund the government. Uh, this is something that's happened before. It happened in 2018 here in the United States. We've had a, you know, a number of them in past history. And I will say that I think the stakes are much higher this year because we are in the midst of a global pandemic. So for example, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, could very much be uh, impacted by a partial government shutdown. You know, we want to keep on researching and looking into ways to combat the spread of COVID-19. And if for a while people aren't going into work and they're furloughed um, at a place like the CDC, that could um, create a lot of problems. Yeah. Joe Biden is known as such a political negotiator over his career. Is he getting his hands dirty in these particular negotiations or is he trying to let other Democrats take that on. You know, I think Joe Biden has definitely been involved. He's had um, various Democrats visit the White House over the past couple of weeks. Over the summer, he was meeting with Republicans to pass that bipartisan infrastructure package. But I will say that I think this is a new political environment for Joe Biden. It's not only two parties divided, but his own party divided, the moderates and the progressives. And I would say that Joe Biden, even though he has a very um, left-leaning, build back better plan that involves lots of tax hikes and government spending, he still is considered more of a centrist Democrat. So he's definitely had a new experience working with progressive Democrats. It's something he hasn't really had to do before um, because we face a new political climate right now. But, you know, Joe Biden campaigned on being a negotiator. He campaigned on reaching across the aisle. So I think the stakes are very high for him to be able to keep that campaign promise of working with Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, and it's tricky because the Republicans who raised the debt ceiling several times in Donald Trump's reign are now really playing hardball and are saying, no, we're not going to do that. This is this is not up to us. You've got control of both the Senate and the House, which is kind of under, unrealistic, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's really playing with fire at this point. Look, if the U.S. were to default on its debt for the first time in history, we would see household, you know, you know, household wealth across the country essentially cut. We would see, you know, roughly six million jobs lost, according to various um, studies and estimates. So there is a real risk if we were to default on our debt, especially as we're coming out of that economic slump we saw during coronavirus. Yeah, high stakes indeed. Great to talk. Thanks, Julia. Thank you.